All right, welcome back to the beautiful Pacific Northwest land of Platinum Coffee and Pack West Bigfoot. And real quick, wanted to give a couple shouts out real quick to Through Night for flashlights, headlights, uh, these little headlamps. I'm telling you, they're awesome. You guys got to check those out. I am not an affiliate of um, any of these things. So just so you know, I'm just giving you... Uh, Basically, just letting you know because I really do enjoy them. They have reached out to me, and uh, it's just been, you know, sharing some of their stuff with me. It's just great. Um, also, my good friend Gunner over there at uh, Sasquatch Coffee, SquatchCoffee.com. Go ahead and grab some over there and get ready for your awesome, yeah, Bigfoot encounter stories from the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> I say that while I smile, but I'm a huge... Huge junkie when it comes to coffee. You know this. I know this. I don't care if it makes me hat gag spick, spit or choke on myself while I'm uh, yeah, sharing these stories. Um, also, a um, little bit out there to Folklore Supply. Um, FolkloreSupply.com. Guys are great. Um, they're just awesome. You want to get some really cool shirts and stuff like that. They just got some awesome stuff. <laughs> so check it out. All right. Um, with that. Already got a winner for this month. Already announced that the other uh, last uh, week before last, um, and uh, August I'll be doing a giveaway as well. So you can get over to packwestbigfoot.com, packwestbigfoot.com. If you subscribe, you enter to win. Also, I am now choosing winners too off of the old YouTube channel here for those who comment on here and leave awesome comments. I go through. I am picky. If you are a potty mouth total troll, I'm not going to pick you. Um, <laughs> Now, you don't have to agree with everything here for me to pick you. I'm just saying you can't be a dirty mouth, foul mouth troll. Okay, that's it. All right, with that, welcome to the beautiful Pacific Northwest Land of Platinum Coffee, PacWest Bigfoot. And let's get on with this week's awesome, awesome. And actually, I do want to set the stage for this one. I was just recently um, camping with my family for a week. It's basically almost a week-long camping trip that we go on. And we pick somewhere usually along the Oregon coast, sometimes the interior parts of Oregon, but usually along the uh, coast uh, coastline. And this year we were heading out to uh, over by uh, the Eel Lake area, Clear Lake, all of that stuff. <clears throat> and uh, I ran into an old-timer, and he was just really nice. And... While I was fishing um, by myself there for just a little bit, um, he had shared something uh, really interesting with me. And so I am going to, um, I'm going to share that with you. Okay. All right. So with that, here we go. The Fisherman and the Bigfoot of Eel Lake. <clears throat> I met an old timer not long ago. He lived over by Eel Lake in Oregon. He told me of a Bigfoot he would see from time to time. It was always in the morning, and while it was relatively pe a, a peaceful encounter, there were signs that this thing could not be trusted. Here is his encounter story, as he told me. The Fisherman Old Pete, that is what they called me. I lived in this area now for over 50 years. My family moved here a long time ago. Back then, my dad built and worked on boats. And with all that fishing going on here, even today, it was a pretty good trade, as it has kept food on the table and a decent roof over our heads. Me, I never liked being on the ocean much, but I, lo I do love the beach, and especially all the lakes around the area. From Ten Mile to Edna to Clear Lake, and even Eel, they are all beautiful in their own way, and full of fish, too. I can't tell you why it is I do not like to be on the ocean. I guess it was just some natural fear of it I had growing up. But I did not mind paddling around Eel Lake or any of the others as a kid. I was homeschooled before homeschool was a necessity for folks because of all this crazy stuff they are trying to teach kids like my grandkids today. The world today is simply crazy if you ask me. I love people, don't get me wrong. But they're all just crazy, period. But <clears throat> you'll probably say the same thing about me, I suppose, when I tell you that Bigfoot is real. And if you're ever up or, or over at Eel Lake, just walk around the lake and listen carefully, because you'll hear him for yourself. I can guarantee it. It started out when I was about 12 to 13 years old. I know that Bigfoot, that particular one, is probably dead by now. But I saw one, and its family, once by Ten Mile Lake. More about that in a moment, as they say. But its young survived, and I think one of them stayed behind. 
It did not. Uh, it did not move on. It just moved north a bit to Eel Lake. The Bigfoot. I was fishing on a Monday, to be exact. We lived and still live in a house that butts right between the dunes and the tree line on the west side of 101 between Lakeside and Winchester Bay. Back in the day, I knew a guy who ran the lighthouse. This is how old of a fart I am, Dave. Ha. But I was fishing that day. Mama wanted me to catch some bass or some crappie for dinner that night before Dad got home, so off I went after my lessons. I could walk there inside of 20 minutes and Eel Lake in 15. I just I got just outside of the downtown area at the edge of the lake, planted myself, and started fishing. Not five minutes in, and I had caught two fish. It was when I was pulling in a, a crappie that I noticed some folks across the way. Well, what I thought were folks walking out of the tree line and onto the beach. After a moment or two, as I was putting that fish on a string, is when I wondered if they were really, if they really were people. I mean, I really thought it was some nice but very tall black folks out there doing some fishing. But as I started staring, which is not polite by all means, but as I did, I noticed the way they moved and how tall they really were. That was hair. It was co it covered their entire body, I realized. Well, as two of them waded into the water, I watched as they seemed to bathe a bit, and after a few moments I saw three uh, young ones hovering just at the edge of the tree line. They never came out into the open, but you could see them. They all huddled, huddled together closely, moving slightly here and there. Eventually I started to realize that I was seeing Bigfoot, and yes, we had heard the stories from some folks around the area over the years. They all started, then they all started to leave. As they did, one of the younger ones, however, stopped before disappearing into the trees and looked back right in my direction. We just stared at each other for what seemed a very long minute, but was only seconds. Suddenly a semi-loud bark could be heard and echoed off the water. This little Bigfoot turned and almost seemed to melt into the trees. He grew up, though, and I mean grew up. Even today, when I, when I can, I, I like to walk over to Eel Lake and fish, and yes, that young Bigfoot I saw that day too, well, until he passed on, I think, is still there. I had seen him on many occasions along the trails there, and sometimes it was a bit scary, and others, well, almost friendly, I guess you'd say. Personally, I never trust a wild thing, but they can do some pretty uncanny things from time to time, like warming up to certain folks, I suppose. This Bigfoot and I did, that's for sure. I heard him the first time back in the mid-1970s. I was getting some fishing in uh, one beautiful spring morning. I was going to meet the girlfriend up there, but her parents would not let her go that day I'd learned. But I did. I still lived at home and worked for my dad. I was also building a smaller home on their property, about a 100 yards from theirs, to raise uh, my own family in. By this time, I was living in it, hoping that young gal would marry me, but that is another story. I headed out and reached the edge of the lake in about 15 minutes. I decided to take a small game trail around a particular point to the south of the lake. That is when I noticed I was not alone, nor would I be from then on out ever. My fishing buddy. I had this crazy feeling I was being followed but I thought it was just a cougar, a bear, or something else. I never expected to see a Bigfoot ever again, ever, period. I sat down on an old log and cast away. I then sat my pole down and turned on my little portable radio, a newer one that just came out. Nothing like my grand, my grandkids and their eye poos, I call them. But America, the band, of course, was playing. I tuned in and set the volume to low. It was a few minutes later when I'd heard what sounded like mumbling, like a person trying to speak, but all they could do was to speak some kind of gibberish. I looked back over my shoulder where it seemed to be coming from. At first I saw nothing but the near pitch black of the forest behind me. But suddenly, he was right in front of my face. Not literally, but like that, you know, the Waldo book, a few seconds 
It took a few seconds to see this tall black figure before me. It was Bigfoot. Well, a Bigfoot. I could not see below the waist of this thing. It was as it was standing back behind some brush and trees. But I could clearly see the rest of it. I was really scared at first. I felt like running and screaming. This thing was scary. Scary looking. Well, ugly, to be honest. It was tall, dark in color, black almost, but with what seemed like red highlights when the sun would hit it. Its face was long, almost droopy in a way, with a flat nose and eyes that seemed pretty human-like, but sunken into its head, making them seem dark in color. It did have that monkey-like aspect to it, though, much more than it had a human-like appearance for sure. But because of it being a wild thing, I was still worried as it stood there just staring at me. At that moment, all while my heart was moving a million miles an hour, I had a fish on. The Bigfoot did not move, and suddenly I felt less afraid and nervous as I slowly reeled in what ended up being a bass. I sat it on the ground next to me as I tried to keep my eyes on that thing that still stood there like a statue. It did, however, suddenly lean forward, and it seemed and to look down at my fish or in the direction of it. That was my cue. I looked at the Bigfoot and looked at the fish and made the craziest decision I'd ever made in my life. Now, I was going to feed this thing and, well, try and see if I could friend it. I know, sounds crazy, but for some reason, it felt right. I felt somewhat safe, but I was not going to be dumb about the situation I was in. That was for sure. I was still freaking out a bit. I took the fish, walked towards the trees where this thing was, and sat the fish on an old dead log, and then looked at the Bigfoot and back at the fish and smiled as best I could, and even lowered my head a bit for some weird reason. I started to move off, and I kept turning to look back to see if this creature or animal would grab that big that fish. And it did. Boy, <clears throat> I have to say, that those things move like elegant ice skaters just floating across the ice and they're massive things too it was at least eight foot tall and eventually i'd bring a measure tape and i measured where i'd seen this thing once and i measured about eight and a half feet from the ground whoa buddy whoa it was real they were real and this one this one bigfoot had become comfortable with me around and i with it However, there were a couple of times that this thing rushed towards me pretty fast, and I think I know why. They are territorial. I started seeing and hearing this thing just off the trail from time to time when I would go fishing. He was like my fishing buddy, but with attitude sometimes. If he was around and I stepped off the trail too far, as I, want, as I did once while trying to leave him something, I'd be rushed and grunted at. And, being so massive, it was scary. It was a scary feeling all of a sudden. Talk about your heart sinking into your chest. But, for a long time, that thing would show up here and there, mostly in the fall and the winter. I did not share this with anyone ever, until now. The reason being is I did not want anything to happen to it, nor did I want it to hurt anyone who wanted to study this thing. But personally, I was selfish for the most part, I believe, and I wanted this experience all for myself. Maybe that was wrong, but I kept it to myself all these years. Okay, now I told one person. My wife, of course. Once she actually came with me fishing and heard this thing mumbling. That day was just before Halloween that year. She did not get to see it, but she had a good idea all of a sudden that I was telling the truth when she started hearing the mumbling start. Once I turned on the radio and cast my line in the water, it just started. She looked at me wide-eyed as we listened to this thing mumble. Well, I like to think he was talking to me. Sometimes, once in a while, I could hear, a, hear it walking back and forth as it mumbled or talked. And once in a while, when someone would come walking by, it would clam up and nothing would be heard until they were gone. Except for my wife that one time. There were, as I said, scary moments, and when folks would come by, especially kids, I worried about them and their safety. This thing was edgy from time to time, territorial like I said, but never did it come out pouncing and killing anyone ever. 
Nor did it ever go beyond rushing and grunting when I got too close, I suppose. I never felt like I was going to be hurt, beaten, or eaten alive. Not even close. It was just a warning from time to time, was all. Everything else was really groovy. Crazy, yeah, but groovy for sure. Then and now. As I said, I never felt like I was in any real danger, but I knew that I was never going to shake hands with this thing either. The only danger would most likely be caused by me. One day, and this was not but back in the mid-90s, but I was walking along and decided to cut down to the lake in a different way. The second I was off that trail, this thing was grunting and even huffing and puffing at me. I did not know he was even there. He immediately let me know that he was. Territorial. That is what they are. But I do not believe it is not over a, it's not over a particular area as much as it is just being in a certain distance of them physically. They stink, too. That part is also really, really true. I noticed the closer he came to me because I could not move close to him on my own accord, and when the wind or breeze picked up, I could smell that dank and heavy smell like that of a wet dog and, well, I guess you'd say rotting onions. Made my eyes water a couple of times. Now, that thing, that Bigfoot, was not around all the time. As I also stated, he, he seemed to be there during certain times of the year. Where he went during the spring and summer, I don't know. What I do know is that every early summer, through fall, he'd be around. Not every day, but he was around the area for sure. Personally, I think he was a relative of the family I'd seen as a youngster, maybe. How long they live, I do not know, but I do know this. Where did you go, Joe? Today I live with my son and his family, but once in a while we make our hour-long drive back to the lake and fish together. I'm an old, I'm old. I recently found out that my mind is slipping away with Alzheimer's. How long I have, I do not know, so I figured I would share this with you. My wife has been gone three years now, and soon enough I will join her in the land beyond. And maybe, just maybe, that Bigfoot too. Who knows? I have not seen him or sensed him around for a few or more years now, and that leads me to believe that he too is gone, passed away into the memory and that place beyond. Maybe my wife and he are hanging out by a lake, her with her radio, and just watching curiously as she fishes on with eyes looking to the horizon in hopes I will come walking up. But even if it is some sort of fanciful thought, it's my fanciful thought. And that is my encounter story. Thanks, Christopher.